All right, we are live. What's going Hello. on, Austin? <laughs> How's it going? It's going man? well, man. What about yourself? Man, just, uh, just made it through the holidays. Just trying to trim back on that uh, extra weight I gained from the. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think <clears throat> I think we're all dealing with that one. <laughs> well, yeah. you're a big gym guy, so that was probably a little bit more of a an issue for you. I, I think I just accepted it a little bit too easily. <laughs> yeah, that's no, fine. It's good. I just, you know, it's good to bulk a little bit. You know, this is the time. Oh, <laughs> there. Matt there Curry. he is. There's Shane. Back. What's going on? Well, thank you everybody who is on here already. We're excited to have you guys. Uh, Whiskey Thursday, as you know, where we get our guests as drunk as possible and uh, try and get their secrets, right, Austin? <laughs> Austin right. the one Austin's the I one that came up with that. That, wasn't it? that was I think Austin's plan. <laughs> Let me fix my light real quick. Yeah, you're good. You're good. But if you guys are watching live, hashtag live in the comments below. Or if you're watching and you're a big fan of Shane's, don't use the hashtag, just write live. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay in the comments below. Let us know you're watching. Also, we have Austin who's gonna be going over a ton of uh, mortgage marketing and kind of some of the stuff that goes along with running a high-level agency, which I think is really awesome, right? And this is a real yeah, treat. All my secrets. This is a treat, man. <laughs> I, we've been trying to get Austin back on here uh, for a little while. He's been super busy and he's been dedicated some time to his family, uh, which is, I think, really important uh, yeah. you know, in business, especially when you're scaling it to levels that are only achievable for uh, amazing guys like uh, like Austin here. <laughs> Right? Yeah. If you guys are He's like now, what are you guys doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> you can make me cry. I don't know what to say when people say stuff like that. Like, okay. <laughs> well, you know what it, it's amazing because awkward turtle. Awkward turtle. <laughs> you know, it's really cool though because Austin, you like it was just like a few months ago, you and I were like chatting late up at night and you were like oh, you know, should I charge this guy 500 bucks? And what am yeah. I supposed to do? And it's like this, like the commission deal you had going. And it's like, you know, like I've got this deal and it's not working out and I'm going to get screwed and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And now you don't even have time to hop on this live with us. <laughs> and that was only a few months ago. It's it's pretty know, wild, man. really. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So congratulations yeah. to your success, man. Appreciate it. And you guys as well. And everyone else here. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't take the credit. Like this, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're going. <laughs> so, uh, Leanne says, I'm not sure if I've ever seen Matt indoors. I know it is uh, a little bit crazy. Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> I've never seen Matt's face. Right, it's getting really cold outside. So I decided to come indoors. Uh, for Did go you the saw a door on your uh, on your room yet? What's that? Is there a door now on that room? No, no. So I called the guy because, dude, it's a weird opening, right? It's a weird opening. Let's see. Can I can I show you? Yeah, you can kind of see like. Oh yeah. It's it's wider than a regular door. It's not really a bedroom. It's kind of like a den. Yeah. So yeah. it's wider than a regular door, and so I talked to somebody the other day about building a door for it. He's like, "Yeah, we can do a custom door, and we'll do French doors and all this stuff." But part of the issue is like, I want it to be quiet in here because I have two kids that are at home all the time. And so he's like, but if you're looking for quiet, your best bet might just be to get some soundproofing curtains and put them on both sides of the doorway. <laughs> soundproofing so curtains. Throughout that we go. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. But either way, I am indoors this week. Uh, and my wife has said no cigars in the house. So we're going with that one. <laughs> but we're drinking, right? We're drinking. Darn right. <laughs> Austin, so, you got your water? Uh, I don't. Wife's making tea. Oh, tea, right? So tea. I came down with a little bit of a yeah. It's not like a weird like uh, cleanse or anything like that. <laughs> I just I came down with a little bit of a stomach uh, bug or something like that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's not like really bad, but it's it's not one of those things where you're just like puking all day. It's just one of those things you're just like ah, oh, just <laughs> don't want to feel like drinking right now. You know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Drink my fair share over the holidays. So, yeah, right. Yeah. You have to. You're with family. All well, happy New Year, uh, <laughs> Austin. You know, I, I, yeah, I forgot everyone, to man. send you a message. <laughs> so. No, sure for real, happy sure New Year did. to everybody who's watching as well. We're so glad that you guys are here. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Where are you? Are you in the U.S.? Are you in Canada? Are you in another country? Are you um, in a in a state somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are let us know where you're watching from 
And uh, what kind of questions you have for, for Austin, you know, especially as an agency owner, as somebody who focuses in the mortgage, mortgage industry, um, all of that fun stuff. Right, Shane? <laughs> just went in you, you just went silent. <laughs> yeah. Or so, if you have a question. Okay, well, we got, here, here we go. We've got, <laughs> we've got Bay Area, California. We got Green Bay, Wisconsin. We got Florida. Florida, uh, I think is the actual uh, correct pronunciation. Elijah is in Michigan. What's going on, man? Joe's in Colorado. Uh, Kemet is in the Big Apple, which I believe is New York, right? <laughs> yep. There we go. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of people watching. We're pretty excited about that. And awesome. how do we want to? How do we want to jump in? Do we just want. I think in? like people don't know who Austin is. Like I, I know a few right. people do. Right. right? Like hey, I, I see him get tagged all over the place. Like hey, anybody doing mortgages? And it's like five people. It's like yep, Austin's your guy. Austin's your guy. Austin's your guy. And Austin's just out there stealing all the clients. And <laughs> he's like, bring yeah, them in. the best part is anybody who is <laughs> anybody who is not tagging Austin. <laughs> is probably white labeling through Austin. <laughs> I've actually seen that some of the guys I work with, not, I don't mind. It's fine. I'll let them take the credit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But that's awesome, man. You have like that big of a following in the mortgage uh, industry. That's why I said you're the master of mortgage marketing. So uh, Shane. I don't know about that. There's a lot of guys who deserve a lot of credit, but. Uh, <laughs> but we're yeah, not giving I, him credit I, tonight. We're giving you credit. So Shane, <laughs> tell us a little bit about why Austin's so awesome. Let's make Take it on three. Yeah. Just try to make me as red as possible. <laughs> give, me a bunch, give me a bunch of compliments and I'll just sit here and nod and turn red. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I think just, you know, overall, um, Austin's always just been a really good guy to work with. Um, super easy going, easy to talk to. Uh, and, uh, you know, always really helpful and stuff. Um, and also really supportive in a lot of the things that, you know, I've done um and uh yeah just you know a, a good marketer um and you know i think you worked really hard at developing you know your craft and making sure that uh whatever you were doing was working for your clients uh and uh you, you know you just implemented you know the things that you were learning uh and and you just <clears throat> like accelerated so quickly over the past couple of months um and and a lot of big successes too from what i've heard and some of the ones that you know I've heard from you and other people out there. I mean, the, the word's getting around. <laughs> so it's uh, Yeah, do you, you want know. to share where you're at currently or where, you, I don't know what exactly, uh, what's that? Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma, okay. I prefer not to share any further details. <laughs> there you go. Austin's done. In my house. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, have a client I meant a where you're at in your audience. agency. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, well, yo I'm austin, hey, austin. Is like well i met one two three main street but yeah like sure you address. Room, so if you knock i'm not gonna answer i am at the top and this is me the owner and here's my my team va admin and then below are white label partners and clients it's kind of like a tree or pyramid i'm at the top of a pyramid <laughs> Scheme, you could say Austin's running a pyramid scheme. I'm running a pyramid scheme. <laughs> just out of my house. There you go. So. That's how the good okay, ones. Well, let's start. talk about. So okay, let's talk about this then. Uh, so Austin doesn't want to share nothing, uh, which is cool. <laughs> it's like he doesn't want to share his address. He doesn't want to share his success. Uh, we'll we'll but, say this. We'll say this. Austin is uh, most definitely uh, running a, a six figure agency on track to to go even beyond that i think right austin i think by the numbers yes I think yeah it's six, it's six figures at least how much a month six figures would be uh what is it eighty three hundred a month yeah then <laughs> see how quick he answered that. oh yeah that's yeah we're doing that <laughs> yeah just want to make so, sure yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> close to seven figures now. that's fine i'm just i'm not normally one of those guys who goes around flaunting like my income and stuff like that but i mean i don't think it's a bad thing it's just not a personal thing i've usually done but uh i mean right. matt and shane you guys know um but I don't, like, I don't like <laughs> i think I, I think yeah and I, mean, I, I think the funny, idea that, austin it, it, yeah go ahead. sorry i was gonna say i think the idea austin is just more to give people a general understanding of okay you know what like this is what i was doing this is where i started and you know i grew yeah, sure. this much this quickly and these are the things that I did to do that 
you know, in order to help other people be able to achieve their own successes, right? And I don't think it's about flaunting, hey, I'm making, you know, $85,000. Well, right? I don't think it's bad. If I had something to sell, then obviously <laughs> <I do. laughs> um, Yeah, no, it's fine. I'm hovering right now. I mean, depends on the month, right? But uh, between 30, 50K. Um, but I'm really, this month, next month, this spring, I'm really trying to hit it hard. And um, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, last year I started off, quit my job, actually December of 2017, and was really, um, you know, five, you know, it'd be three, five, eight K a month. Um, you know, it's so really, so I look back, so I had some, had some low months, um, kind of this time last year, and then I don't know what it was, I hit my stride in, in the spring of 2018 and just kept the momentum going. 10k yeah. to 15k to you know blue i blew from 15 to 30k like this like in one month um mm -hmm. so it was pretty cool um and then i've steadily been around there obviously q4 is kind of a tough time for to grow more you know because it's mm -hmm. you get a lot of people you know especially december that are just want to wait until january and budgets <laughs> and things like that um so but yeah no i mean I think I think it's really, if I'm proof uh, of anything, or uh, I think it's that anyone can do it. You know, anyone can get <laughs> can start from nothing and get to, um, you know, a six figure or even seven figure, you know, agency. I mean, it's really whatever you want. Like, you don't have to have a seven figure agency if you value time or you value, you know, just working minimal hours or you want to keep your job or you want to be able to travel it's just whatever you want that's the beauty of online marketing you don't have to have a seven figure agency you don't have to get you know go for a two comma club award mm -hmm. you know what i mean um you can there's so many guys who no one knows about that are make that are making six seven eight figures and they don't they don't <laughs> care about the two comma club award you know what i mean yeah. um so yeah i mean I, I think that's what's cool about internet marketing so we can go out and make a lot of money and have a life. Uh, the biggest thing to me is a lifestyle business, you know? So, yeah. Nice. And tell us a little about what was it, what, what were you doing before you got into internet marketing? <laughs> like what was your uh, last yeah. December like December was, before this? <laughs> December before this, I remember being home. So I, I was a salesman for a home health company and I remember being home and having, I, I basically would pass out cookies to nurses and doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. And it was a good, it was a good gig, made decent money for like a job, you know, um, liked it was really flexible. Um, and you know, my boss never checked up on me, never knew if I was working or not, but as long as referral, as long as sales were being made, she didn't really care. <laughs> right. Was fine. Like total autonomy though. It was great. Um, but you know, it wasn't really challenging and I wanted something more. And I think everyone wants, you know, internet marketing for us to, have been in business or who have been around it and you know I, I don't know there's something that was always enticing about just being working wherever you want not having a boss not having you know um not not being tied down to a, a certain area just working from a laptop um that was something that just always i mean it really feels like a dream you know what i mean it, it's kind of crazy um yeah yeah no that's awesome so in your last job um, I mean, were you, were you making six figures doing that or no. was this like, it was like 50, 60 a year. Okay. So, but know. this was probably a, a pretty massive transition. Um, <laughs> when you started making crazy, awesome, fun money, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's weird. Cause like, I, I'm, I'm such a frugal person. Like literally before I moved or before I started my prior sales job, like I'd live in a dorm for four years, like with a bunch of guys. And uh, my the first place I lived after college, I was actually sleeping on the floor with roaches for like three or four months, mm -hmm. and like paying like two fifty a month, you know. <laughs> and, and like, with, there's like five guys in a home. There's like, yeah, there's five guys in a three bedroom home. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was pretty bad. But I, I like, I didn't care. So that's what's weird is like, I don't see all these guys with Lambos and stuff. And I'm just like, I drive like a used Subaru and like, <laughs> you know, a Buick, we still rent our house. Like, you know, I'm, 
I just feel like it's um, totally different. Like, you know, I'm pretty good at managing money. Like I don't just like, I'm not really good at that spending it so like <laughs> it's, i think the biggest thing i'll splurge on is like i'll buy a wild caught salmon at whole foods <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> everybody's got their thing right everybody's got their thing like it, uh, and we don't we don't ask you that to make you uncomfortable but i think like yeah, people need to see, like what what is possible in this industry man i mean you were going from you know doing the sales job last year a year later you know are you is your goal seven figures for uh, 2019 or are you going lifestyle or what, what is your goal? Yeah, for- I mean, it's, you know, I mean, seven figures sounds nice, but I think it is a little overrated. Cause like, I'm very content with my life right now. I mm-hmm. think it's more just, um, yeah, obviously I, I do have goals. I want to build out more of the, the systems. I think I want to become hone my skills more as a media buyer and become more versatile with other traffic sources. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Facebook has gotten more expensive. So looking at, other um avenues right now um you know and it's fun testing those out to me it's it's really fun to me because i studied marketing like i really love the strategy the theory and putting that into um you know taking in an idea and seeing if it'll work yeah Uh, that's what i like to do Uh, and it's cool that now I, i get to focus more on that rather than doing uh all these different things you know um so yeah, I would say it's it's kind of more so like that, and you know, I mean, we'll keep, yeah, you're well, looking for like the lifestyle and to have fun. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. The, yeah, kind of. A mix Austin's of so yeah. young too, right? Like you're young. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. How old are you? <laughs> like twenty three. Nineteen. Nineteen. <laughs> He's not drinking. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, I'm no, how old are you? Uh, I'm twenty five. 25 yeah, still young guy yeah, 25 <laughs> hey, hey so uh, so i've got two quite like i've got two questions that that like i i'm interested to interested to hear um so I, I really would like to hear the story about like the day you made the decision to do what you're doing now and what that looked like for you how you got into this i'd like to hear that and then the other side the other question i have is what because i know you and i used to talk and like, you know, there were like, you were struggling with some clients and things like that. And, and there was, you know, you had like issues and, you know, you wanted to grow. And so I'm really interested in, to find out what happened where you were doing, you know, eight to 10,000 a month. And all of a sudden you went, you, you something changed in your business Yeah, that went yeah. from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 50, you know, like, well, and Shane, you and I both knew Austin. Uh, from a while back. No, you did. Like, you, you have nothing to do with our relate. Like, listen, <laughs> don't try and jump no, in the middle say, of God. this relationship that I like. I Austin and I had, she and then you jelly. just come along. She's getting jelly. It's okay. You know what? The, 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 you know what's <laughs> no, really but, interesting. You know, you know what's really interesting is when Austin and I used to like chit chat and stuff like that. And then you and I, Matt, we used to chit chat. And then I get on the phone with Austin and Austin's like, yeah, that Matt Kramer guy, you know, like he's really good. I eh? what he does. I'm like, yeah, you know, he's okay and stuff, but like he's a little flaky, isn't he? And then, and then I get on the phone with Matt and Matt's like, you know, Hey, that Austin guy is pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, you know, but he's a little flaky. You know? It's like, I was the guy in the middle there. <laughs> it was funny. Cause we were all talking to each other, but not like together. Yeah. Um, so like, just, by the way, guy. I'm just kidding. I never yeah, said he says he's, he's, yeah, no, no, no. it is <laughs> no, funny though, before were, you right? like, before you know, like, cause I have friends like that now. I'm like, who's this guy? I think he is like, you know, <laughs> ex agent. Like, who's this? Guy? You know, cause there's always that little friendly competition. You know, we're all right. marketers and stuff. I, I think at least early on, and then I think once you kind of achieve a certain level, or like I've been doing it for a little bit, um, I think that's when you realize like, oh, this is a huge world. You know, marketing is huge. Internet marketing is huge. Like one other guy one other competitor like you know what i mean it's it's kind of silly yeah it's almost like you don't yeah you don't really see each other as competitors anymore especially when yeah and, yeah and plus, it's almost yeah and plus you see like okay we're all we all have the same goals and i spend like none of my friends in the real world like here like they're all in accounting banking you know hr fill in the blank right? yeah yeah um so none of them really understand like the stuff I do. They think it's like Facebook posts. <laughs> 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 it's like, 
Oh, he like spins all day posting on Facebook and right. Like, you know, like, it's like one of those memes, like what your yeah. friends think you do. What yeah, you're exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah, and so it's cool because like internet marketers, like you know, we all understand, like, even my wife, I'll show her stuff, and she's like, oh, that's great, honey, you know, like, <laughs> you know, there you go, like, oh, a dollar, dollar leads, you know, a two dollar long form mortgage leads, like, okay, nice, yeah, for sure. okay. oh. <laughs> you know, so, that's uh, awesome, but yeah, so well, it's, it's, it's a fun, yeah, it's fun being in the community now, you know, for sure, yeah, and what I was going to say earlier is, it was funny, because, like I said, I was talking to you, Shane was talking to you, Shane and I were talking, but we weren't all three talking. <laughs> so that kind of changed. But while we were talking with you, it was almost like, um, it was almost like, like with the college sports, right? You got a quarterback who does okay. They're doing well. And then all of a sudden, like next season they come out and you're like, holy cow, this guy's going to be first pick on the NFL draft. <laughs> like that was Austin. He was just like, he's doing good. He's doing well. He's doing holy crap <laughs> and, and he's yeah. so humble well, about it so we have to bring it out but the thing is i i think it's really just like you know i wrestled in high school and i i are yeah, and for the so for like, the record i just made a sports reference yeah no i like that it doesn't happen often. i think sport, sports refer, references are great they apply to life you know it's like what our coach would say like um he would say like um luck is when uh opportunity meets hard work i think mm -hmm. that's what it was something like that but i know what it means in my head so that's all that matters but basically it was like you have to work hard every day and when you are dedicated you work hard you show up yeah uh, oh luck is when oppor or uh luck is when hard work meets opportunity yeah that, is that what i said or not okay i don't know <laughs> um but yeah it's when hard work and so you have that hard work and then after a while an opportunity comes across because we i think we've all had those opportunities we just weren't prepared for them you know and we're just like oh this could be a huge whale this could be a huge client or this could be a huge thing you know if i could just crack this one niche or i could just do this or that like um you know we've all kind of had those moments or those clients and then we just either weren't prepared or didn't have didn't get the results or whatever it was and i i you know i've dropped the ball i had one client who like we had five or six locations it was a mortgage broker five or six locations i'm getting paid per location it's awesome I'm making a lot of money from it and then um for whatever reason like one of the locations wasn't converting the leads which is always a challenge right um but they stopped like the whole deal and they were going to scale to like 27 locations i was pretty wow. upset about it. i mean because that would have been a huge account you know what I mean? right like even if they got a huge volume discount um still would have been you know 10 12 15k ballpark um account you know a month just for you know that one and the nice thing is with those big accounts like that they don't really take a lot more time to manage um you know i mean a lot less time to manage than say 10 other clients right mm -hmm. um that's what's nice about the the big clients like that and so i think you know, I, it is a little bit of luck. I think, you know, you can't discount that when you see someone who's successful or makes seven figures. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work, but it also is like, it was timing, you know, they got, they got in at the right time. Um, they talked to the right person. They had a good network, something along those lines, right. Yeah. They were prepared for it. Um, and they kind of struck gold, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't feel like I can pick all the credit, but I think, there's a, there's a ton of those opportunities like that out there. If we're willing to pick up the phone, you know, create more conversations, network with more people. And you talk to enough people, you'll find those, you know, um, those strands of gold like that and just basically follow the vein, you know? Yeah. So. Well, Shane, you had a question earlier. Um, yeah, Frank. nobody, uh, he still hasn't answered it yet. Well, in the meantime, if you guys are watching live, hashtag so live in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay in the comments below. Let us know here uh, and let us know your questions because we are going to get to those. Don't worry. Well, so I guess I, 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 I guess part of um, my second question was I was curious to know what happened. Um, you know, you were kind of hovering around sort of, you know, doing like eight to 10,000 a month or so, you know, managing a few clients and then you scaled that and then just kept scaling it. Right. So I was curious to know what you did inside of your business. Um, or, or what you changed 
you know, like, and, or what changed for you in order to, to be able to start scaling like that. And what's really interesting, you know, what I find really interesting about a lot of the like guys like you, Austin and other entrepreneurs and like other people starting their businesses and stuff, like you guys are pretty much learning on the fly. Like, it's not, you know, like, like my agency's like, this is the, the, the seventh company I've started, right? So it's like, it's, mm-hmm. you know, I know what's going to happen. I know how, you know, you kind of know how to get clients, you know, how to manage your right. finances, you know, how to, you know, you know you, how to start a corporation, you know about your taxes, all that other crap. Like you guys are dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, and so, and I find it amazing to watch guys like you in just a year to be able to scale to what, you know, you scale to. Uh, but I'm curious to know, like, you know, you were doing a certain amount of volume for a certain amount of months, and then all of a sudden you started scaling quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I would say, um, I guess the, the big turning point, you know, because I, I think, you know, we have that shiny object syndrome initially. You know, I remember I would listen to one podcast that would be about a sales guy, you know, Grant Cardone or something like that. And he's like, oh, you got to do cold calls. And I would actually go in, I remember going in like a couple clinics, like for chiropractors. When I started off, I was kind of going for chiropractors. And uh, I remember walking in one and I didn't have a business card or nothing. And, but he like admired that. And so I ended up like doing some work with him for a little bit. Um, And, you know, we're still, I mean, you know, connected even today, which is cool. But like, you know, I think it's just, it, to me that that did make me a little bit uncomfortable but i think it was it did kind of spark something you know like picking up the phone calling people um going in now i don't still do that just because i I don't for one i don't need to but also i think it's um it is it's a it's hard to automate that you know if you're doing it personally so like right now at this point i'm i'm all about trying to automate those things now unless you just love cold calling you're freaking good at it one guy i work with all he does is cold call and he scaled over 20 clients all in loan officers just from cold calling. So, wow. you know what I mean? But he's just, a, he's a beast like that. So uh, for me personally, I think it's just, I kind of found I was better at running the ads. Um, and I was, I would actually take on clients or take on like ads or, or campaigns. I didn't really know how to do just cause I would want to give them a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just like weird or difficult or hard niches and i remember somebody yeah. wanting to take on an optometrist at one point you guys yeah. remember that yeah. that was, was a uh, weird niche <laughs> yeah you yeah but i mean thing on. Is, there's like there's so <laughs> many of these tough niches out there everyone's going after chiropractors gyms and and you can still go in those niches and make a ton of money it, it's just, you're just going to have a harder time because they get bombarded uh with so many calls you know even realtors and and loan officers now i think there's still a great niche just Mm -hmm. because of the ball the sheer volume you get you have of realtors right there's the turnover right is like what 50 or 70 percent a year or something crazy like it or maybe it's every three years like well are you working with a lot of new agents or you not not as much anymore okay mainly mortgage yeah but i just mean i i think those are good industry but my point was um if you can crack something that the problem with uh, some of these niches is that it's it's almost too easy that mm-hmm. everyone's going after those clients. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like real estate, it's fine. It's about, all about finding those good clients that are they're good at following up. They 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 pay well. They have you know, um, they they don't have a <laughs> huge ego, right? Yeah. Uh, the unicorn real estate agent. Um, <laughs> now, I, I have a fan, my, I, and that's, I'm saying that coming from a family of real estate agents. So I know right. that, like, what it's like to work with some of them. No, there's um, no doubt, guys. I'm a real estate agent too. We got egos, yeah. right? That's why we're in yeah. real estate. And some we're are worse real. than others, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you'll deal with that in any industry, doctors as well. But my point was, like, if you can find, I, I, I knew or I learned that if I could find a, a couple of these, I guess, kind of difficult niches to crack or some leads. Um, that I could generate in niches that not everyone was going for, then I could um, just try to scale that. And so part of it was just mortgage, but also um, some sort of speci- specific um, types of leads. So I primarily do like VA leads. Okay. Um, and now, you know, I would say that's probably the biggest thing, but we do, I mean, I, I do a lot of like VA, VA cash out, you know, refinance, mm-hmm. um, um, you know, just kind of some weird niche programs that aren't just like the discount 
um, home buyer or low down payment type programs. Right. To try and I guess create, you know, differentiate from that. Um, the other thing is, you know, I, I am always looking at, I guess, new, I'm, I think part of my ADHD or whatever you want to call it part, you know, sometimes it can hurt us, but sometimes it's actually helped me. Um, the shiny object syndrome that is. So like we hear a new niche, um, there's something to be said for, you know, I'm, I just work in this niche, but I think at the same time, um, there's also opportunity. So if you know, um, you know, there's a huge opportunity, it could actually be worth your time to go in and figure out, okay, how can I crack this? What do I need to do? You know, really thinking the psychology of that. And then once you have a case study for that niche, going in and exploiting that and scaling up, right? Well, yeah. I mean, um, you're basically, you're talking about the difference between being a small fish in a big pond versus being a big fish in a small pond, right? Right. Exactly. You're going into that almost like the blue ocean, like, like Russell talks about. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I mean, yeah, you can, you know, all the niches work. I think they're all really great. Um, what I found for mortgage specifically that helped us was we we basically, and I kind of help my like white label partners that I work with kind of packages, but we do basically a guarantee of leads okay. kind of all, all in one fee. And I just found it was an easier sell. Yeah. Joe knows him veteran loans. BA. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked what is BA? I think that's badass. But it's not what we're referring to. <laughs> yeah. Badass loans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, I, Hell, found just, that. I need new headphones. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just a little. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, but I found that if, you know, by offering a guarantee to clients uh, and then helping them with the follow up, helping them, um, you know, get high quality leads. So a lot of times we'll filter leads out poor credit or under certain loan amounts, you know. Because in some parts of California, the the leads are just priced out. You know, you're not going to find something, you know, for two hundred thousand in San Diego, you know, or San Francisco. It's just not happening. So some of right. those places will filter out anything under, you know, four hundred thousand, um, or under, you know, filter out the poor credit leads. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, I think doing stuff like that has really helped because they're used to kind of these Facebook as being, you know, name, email, phone. Um, and, you know, if you can assist them with following up on those, you can convert them. But I think the more information you can gather, the higher qualified they are, um, you know, asking leads, like, when are you looking to move? Things like that, that's really help the agents or the, the loan. I have, like, actually a few agents I work with who I do mortgage leads for. Okay. And they like, they like them as well because they're uh, a little bit higher intent, you know. Yeah. And, um yeah. And I don't think if you took the sheer numbers, I don't think they would necessarily convert higher than the real estate leads. But mm -hmm. I think it's just the fact that you get more information and you can filter out um, things like credit and. Uh, right. You know, now, what are you seeing right now? Um, average as far as what a would what do you consider good credit? Because you'd probably only be sending good credit. Is that what you said earlier? Fair. Well, I, I usually do. Fair. fair plus. Okay. Yeah, fair, fair would be what? So fair, um, well, so some of them what we'll, we'll do is like um, 600 and below is poor credit and okay. 600 plus, unless the agent has, you know, wants to do 620 or 640 and up. But usually okay. VA, I mean, v, there's no limit to what a, a, a veteran can qualify for. It's just whatever the lender is willing to give them, you know what I right. mean? But a lot of them won't go below, like the, I think the lowest I've worked with is like, well, there's one guy I know he's doing like a four in the four hundreds and he's crushing it. I'm almost like, dude, I almost feel a little weird about that. <laughs> so like, wow. wow. You know, like that that is. That is. I haven't seen that's a little extreme. But I've seen the so lenders have the five C plans. Kind of, yeah, five eighty, five sixty is kind of like a lot of them will do for for veterans. Okay. Um, you know. So but yeah, I think anything over six hundred is is doable for VA okay. for the and for part. the six for the six hundred plus what are you charging um or not what are you charging what are you seeing as far as a lead cost uh a lead like cost um on average yeah. if you had to give an average are you seeing like twenty bucks twenty five 
I mean, what are you seeing for no, those? I mean, lead counts is, is a lot lower. I mean, if you're saying for all across the board, it could be anywhere from, I have one campaign, I think it's in Texas. They're like literally so like $2 leads and Florida has been pretty cheap as well. Okay. Um, I, and I would say, I don't think those are just, um, yeah, those are all credit. So I would say, you know, you're looking at low end five bucks a lead for fair credit plus, okay. you know, so poor, fair, good, great, basically. Okay. Um, so anything fair or above. Fair and above um, is what you charge for. I would say five is definitely low end, but you know, 10 to 15, it, it really does depend on the state, you know? It depends yeah, so, on the state. and that's what I was wondering because you were talking about the difference between those and real estate yeah. leads. And, and I guess if you're getting, you know, dollar fifty uh like foreclosure campaign leads from the master class um you can get 10 of those for 15 bucks and you might have one that's going to be ready to go with a decent credit right versus what you're doing is you're you're taking the funnel and you're bringing it way down yeah to find well, those people I, yeah and i think it's just it's really preface i don't think there's one method that's better than the other because i don't i'm not using facebook lead forms for these um, you know, lead forms do work, but I think it's really, if, if, if you, if you have like that follow-up system, that back end that's like really can, can fall consistently and crush yeah, those and that's, lead forms. That's probably another um, question. Uh, cause somebody brought it up earlier. Are you using chatbots, surveys, lead forms? What are you doing typically for these? Um, so a little bit of, uh, I've done a little bit of chatbots, um, yeah, I know you not, and I were talking uh, about that earlier. Is, is yeah, what... I, I'd love to actually do a little bit more chatbots. I know Matt and I were talking about a couple ideas to um, to use for those. I haven't really um, nailed down chatbots. Like they do work, um, and actually, yeah, that's one of my goals to kind of work on a few more of them. Um, mm -hmm. But I've been doing more surveys. So like, um, they'll go to a landing page with you know with a, a full questionnaire of, you know, Hey, what, what loan amount do you want? Are you working with a realtor? You know, sometimes we'll say, have you been approved for a loan? Have you found a home? What's your down payment score? Mm -hmm. or excuse me, your down payment amount, credit score, you know, all those things. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Yeah. Are you working with a realtor? How many of the ones that are coming in right now are currently working with a real estate agent? Uh, yeah. I mean, it kind of depends like how far they are in the long the process. I would say most of them aren't working with the realtor yet. Okay. Um, so which is cool though, because these, these, uh, you know, the, the lenders can actually use these leads and send them to a realtor partner to help them work the lead, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and that's what yeah. I tell them to do with the core credit leads. I'm like, look, you don't, you don't want to take them. That's fine. But like, you might as well, like we're generating them anyway, like send them to your realtor partner, send them to your a credit repair specialist and convert it in six months. Makes not, sense. You know? um, now, Susan has a question. She says, my mortgage clients in Niagara Falls, Ontario, and his website is first for most of the search results in the area, which is great. Great SEO. Um, however, we have pretty much zero searches in Niagara. Um, okay. That's an interesting thing because, you know, having a little bit of SEO in my background, I'd almost wonder if people are looking for, uh, mortgage loans versus Niagara mortgage loans. So it may not be that you don't have searches. It just may be that they're not searching for a specific location uh, for the for the loans. That that could be something. But anyways, she's tried a few different ads like the go-to train running daily to Niagara, but terrible result, results. Um, should I be doing information videos instead with PDFs and just build the list? He's willing to go live and add value, but it's been tough. I guess what are what are some of the things that you're doing? Um, so hey, let me just speaking. first of all, let me just interrupt. So yeah, um, first of all, she's talking about Niagara and Ontario. I'm, I'm yeah, gonna, you, so that would be appropriate for you to answer that, Shane. Well, n not that I, I can't. I mean, I've only done a few mortgage ads, and you know, we've done some pretty good ones here in Canada and in the Toronto area, um, where we're, we're getting decent results. But the biggest challenge I think with um, mortgages in Canada is are the offers. And I think that's where, you know, working in the U.S., uh, you know, especially for a marketer, it, it makes it really, really easy to 
you know, be able to generate these leads mm-hmm. a lot easier than what, what we can do here because you have the offers, you have the VA offers, you've got, you know, some, the certain states have different offers and grants for mortgages. You've got first time home buyer offers, you've got down payment assistance. Here in Canada, we've got, hey, if you got 20% down, you can buy a house. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. That's like the, those are, that's our offer. You know, there are some cases where we have yeah. um, some shady mor- mortgage brokers here where they'll do, you know, 5% down and change your incomes and things like that. But uh, you typically don't want to advertise that. And, uh, but it, it, like, we just don't have the same options and the same programs here to be able to, you know, to run and, and be able to get these these cheaper leads. The other thing too is it's a lot harder to buy a house here in in Ontario uh, or in Canada than it is in the United States. There, the mortgage rules are different. Uh, mm-hmm. the application process is different. You're oh, what are you trying to say? Canada's better? What's going on? No, I'm not saying no. I'm just saying it's actually a lot easier. Like find a mortgage broker in the U.S. if you want to work with mortgage brokers, right? Um, it's just way way easier. And, and Austin, I, I believe you've actually done like if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's such a funny guy how do we shut him off <laughs> yeah, someone stop that man I know, right? <laughs> um have you done mortgage stuff in canada at all um awesome yeah i have um yeah it works well um i would say the biggest thing is you know it, it does depend kind of the way you angle your offer um you know um uh, for this particular client, though, for Susan, I think, you know, she's saying there's not enough searches. If there's not enough searches. You're going to have to go a different, you know, avenue. You have to go like interruption marketing. You know, I would try what I was saying earlier is with the surveys. The surveys are great. Um, and I like them for they really do convert well. Um, like we have a loan officer. He's been with us one month, about got about 75 leads. And he's close to like talk to him today. Um, which doesn't always happen. It definitely doesn't always happen. But I do think the, um, if you're looking at like actual quality as far as like contact rate, um, mm-hmm. because we're adding the filters, I do think they close higher than real estate leads. But mm-hmm. that being said, you know, there's added costs and things like that. I would go, you know, either do like lead form ads or just like try to get him some leads in his pipeline. Um, you know, just basically pipeline fillers. I mean, that's honestly what I would do if I was a loan officer, like they all want the high quality, like, you know, high intent leads, which they're great, but I would just like get a a ton of leads and nurture them, retarget them and, you know, build an email list. Like, you know, everyone's just thinking about converting that lead that comes in instead of like nurturing, you know, the leads over time. I don't know. That's just kind of my perspective. It's just that like, if you build, if you bet out a 10,000, um, you know, person email list or, um, you know, you know, they're on your text system with, I don't actually, I don't know if you can do that in, in well, Canada, like with Lion Desk or something like that. Like, you know, that's an easy way to, you know, keep a high volume of leads, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, I guess it just depends on preference, but I, I would go more, like go more aggressive with, with the Facebook ads um for those leads though for sure yeah and i also think like pushing the brokers i, I mean that's another thing too you got to pick your clients like especially if you're going to work with mortgage brokers in canada you, gotta pick, you might want to pick your clients a little bit um because i think you know some of them you know i worked with one that was you know like he didn't there was just one type of offer he wanted to run he didn't want to and I'm not breaking the rules, but like bend the rules a little bit, not, and not even the necessary bend rules, but just kind of word the offer in a way that makes it, you know, there's an incentive for somebody to actually opt into it. Right. Um, and so we ran some 5% down, you know, uh, mortgage offers here, which is, you know, unheard of. Uh, but the reality is 15% of it is insured, right? Like it, it wasn't, you know, it's a bit of a bait and switch there, but, um, and, and those worked well. We did to survey and it was similar to what, um, Austin does. And, um, uh, oh, so, what are you saying? What? What are you saying oh. there? You <laughs> switching people? I know we're yeah, messing with people. people. The same way we do with uh, the new thing. Estate. New thing we can do. Yeah, well, same um, thing we do with real estate, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was referring to uh, Zoom. I sent a message in Zoom, and Austin's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
what questions do you guys have on mortgage marketing? Are you working with any mortgage officers or loan originators and whatnot currently? And if not, um, it might be something to look at. You know, it's de- it goes hand in hand with real estate. And again, I think this is really good for any real estate marketer to know because if you were to do co-marketing where you're working with the real estate agent and the loan officer at the same time, so you reduce their cost while still, you know, making the money that you're attempting to make, uh, you have another option, right? You can go for real estate leads with houses, homes lists, things like that, or you can go the loan officer route and, and get these leads, right? Either one works. It's just, which one do you want to go after? And which one does your client want? Does that make sense? Yep. yep. So, um, <laughs> it's like, yep. Yeah, I know. I know. Does that, does that make sense? That's like what I what I say in some of my coaching calls. And so, <laughs> whoops. Anyways, um, Austin, do you have a lot of loan officers that are co-marketing with a real estate agent or not currently? Um, some of them, yeah. I think that you know, it's they sound uncommon. I I think I don't know. I mean, yeah, I do, I do, but I would say more of them aren't. More of them aren't. Okay. Yeah. But this is a huge opportunity for for loan officers, for for agents. I mean, loan officers are dying for agents that are willing to close leads. Like I talked to a loan officer not too long ago, um, and they're like, "Yeah, we're just we're happy to pay for marketing for for an agent if we know they can close any of them. Like, send me as many as you have. You know, like they're <laughs> they're happy to pay yeah, for the marketing. The I, yeah, that's the thing is like I feel like if a, if I was a realtor. Uh, I would approach a lender and be like, look, because lenders would pay money. Like they got money. Yeah. A lot of them will pay like good money. Um, I would just be like, Hey, look, let me work your leads for you. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And we're not telling you what to do with RESPA. We're yeah. not telling you how to get around yeah, the rules yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Uh, different but maybe different maybe rules and lender stuff, but like, goes in and buys a bunch of leads and lets you work them. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying like, Stay within the RESPA guidelines, wherever you're at and whatever they are, and get into some co-marketing because this is huge. It reduces your costs, helps you get more leads, helps you get more closings. Like you're crazy to stay out of it. Uh, Dan had a question. What are your surveys based on? Um, I would imagine truth, but we'll see. Uh, We just talked about that. Move on. Is that Dan Tiemann? Yeah. Yeah, move on. Move on? Okay. For control. (laughs) I'm just kidding. No, he says he's, I'm only saying that because he said that in the comments. I know he did just just above that. <laughs> he's a good guy. Uh, let's see here. What are your surveys based on? Just to see if you qualify or what? He said his LOs kind of suck at closing. It's a struggle. Uh, to be honest. Well, thank you for being honest. I, I appreciate that over lying to us. <laughs> he's like the most dishonest guy I know too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, again, you can, so I, don't, I can't make that many jokes. Again, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, David says, I need to work with mortgage, which is awesome. Yeah, I think it's something, honestly, I think it's something you should have in your toolbox if you're working in the real estate yep. industry, because it goes hand in hand. Um, but Austin, yeah, I originally learned mortgage ads to help my realtors because they would mm-hmm. get an LO. I feel like the funny thing is, now that I'm working more with, with uh, you just asked us a minute ago, mm-hmm. are there a lot of like co-marketing? Uh, for mortgage, not as much. But when I was doing real estate agents, I felt like every other agent was like, oh, when my agent or my lender's going to pay for this. My lender's going to do this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm fine um, uh, but lenders, they're not as, I guess, like they're, you know, I think by and large, like because there's so many agents, a lot of agents aren't, you know, um, it's hard to know which ones are making money. And so, but the lenders, a lot of them are, are, you can bank if they're a lender, they're probably, you know, at the very least, they're, they're probably making decent money. You know, um, I would say, you know, obviously there's, there's a ton of realtors that are crushing too, but there's just so many realtors that are, um, you know, not really full time or they're, um, it's hard to really know. Right. So I think, with loan officers, they're, they're at least a little bit more willing to put down money is what I found. Like they're not as afraid of that. It's kind of like working with lawyers. Like uh, one of the guys I work with, he works with lawyers and he had talked to one over email and they sent him $5,000. He's like, I don't even want to talk on the phone. You know what I mean? Like, so it just <laughs> kind of comes with the territory, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, 
whatever i don't know what the original question was at this point uh, i think we're just kind of rambling uh, <laughs> <laughs> no worries well he was referring to the yeah. uh, the surveys are they just yeah. like do your surveys like see if you qualify for a va loan or like yeah i mean that's basically yeah. it it's and like, you're kind of asking for the offer <laughs> well that see that's the thing is like with the with the uh, with the mortgage, it, it makes sense to ask for more information because we're saying, see if you qualify. With real estate, it's like, you know, it, it doesn't quite make as much sense to get, you know, 10 different data points of information just to see pics of a home, if that makes right. sense. Uh, now, you can fit it. I've seen people fit it in there. You definitely can. And I've seen other people who do like, see if you qualify for this home. Um, I've tried it. It doesn't seem to work as well as just going straight mortgage direct offer. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I would definitely try and mix it up and do some longer form like surveys, you know, if you're, if your agents or, um, LOs, whoever are having a tough time closing, um, chances are you can get them better quality leads, uh, through mortgage, but there's also a good chance that they're just, uh, have, you know, having a tough time closing leads in general, <laughs> so, which is more often the case. So. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, brought, and, and the other thing too is just like real estate as well. I mean, it's it's, it's all about testing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're always and works in one market may not work in another market. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> yeah, and people people need to remember that, right? Like, especially people that are just getting kind of started. Um, you know, yeah. real estate agents out there, mortgage brokers out there that are doing their own ads, and you know, you see this all the time where it's like, okay, well, I tried something, didn't work. Facebook's broken, right? It sucks. Well, mm -hmm. no, you got to try. It doesn't work. Try again. It doesn't work. Try again. Right until it works, because that, yeah. that's part of it. That's part of the process. Yeah, and I've I, I've had some in some areas. I've ran, you know, FHA or like low down payment type ads and gotten really cheap leads and run VA and and VA are way more expensive. And another market, it's the opposite. The VA is super cheap, and the FHA or low down payment are more expensive. It's weird, you know. Right. So it's just in different markets you could never know until you actually start testing it and running it, you know? And are you, uh, are you comfortable getting into some of the custom audience stuff that you've, you've figured out? Well, what, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I just know we talked a while back and you doing some stuff with custom audience. I don't yeah, I mean, remember what think... it was, but you had figured out some stuff. That yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. I remember I got a fucking awesome memory, man. <laughs> yeah. I drink too much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing is like, initially it's, you got to kind of like, you got to let the pixel, you know, I saw another guy post something in one of the groups I'm in, like about training your pixel. Yeah. I think that's really part of it. My, my, the couple of pixels I run right now, they're really freaking strong just because they've been running like the same. I have one pixel. Like, pixels or pickles? I thought pickles. he said pickles. Too. He said pickles. I think I heard pickles. Yeah. Really strong pickles. Uh, no, but they're really strong pixels. Because I have one that's specific for VA purchase. Right. I have one that's specific for, um, you know, like general uh, FHA purchase, right? Okay, so are, are you running these specific. from from the mortgage loan officer's uh, page? Or are you running them from your own page? It's my own page. Generally speaking, it's my own page okay. unless unless it's, you know, if one of us, sometimes it, we'll do it from the loan officers, but generally speaking, yeah, we do it from ours. Okay. And, and I was just curious because you were talking about your pixels or your pickles or whatever you're talking about, but you were yeah. talking about, you are talking about your pixels and I wasn't sure, like, are you, are you doing this with uh, specific agents or is it your own? And you like, are you seasoning that pixel with like multiple loan officers, but these are people focused on VA or FHA. Like, do you have one per offer? Is that kind of what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we pretty much will have like, I mean, I probably have four, four or five different um, pages that will yeah. run. And I know you can't get it into all of it right now because it's. No, that's basically what it is. Matt, I can say something. I got to say something. Sorry, okay, sorry, sorry, I got to interrupt you guys because Matt, you're notorious. No, I apologize. This. What I do. <laughs> yeah, like, so you me. ask a question. I'm just going to say this because you ask a question. Austin's in the middle of spilling the secrets here. And then you jump into like business pages. And then like we went from audiences to business pages to pickles to like in the matter of like 30 seconds. Like well, let, let the guy finish answering. I feel like he took us from audiences to pixels. Matt, Matt Kramer, everybody. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> there you go. Okay. This is what I have to deal with every day. Yeah, every day. Every day. <laughs> Dane's like, hey, are we working on this? And I'm like, guess what? <laughs> yep. That's it. That's life. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. But you know what? I, I and and speaking of that, the lack of focus. Um, I, I really think like if we go back to my original question, my belief is that you going from doing you know, eight to ten thousand dollars, hovering around that, and all of a sudden scaling probably had to do with you being focused. I'm almost positive. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost positive it had something to do with it. You actually, you actually started speaking. focusing. Yeah, I mean, I started focusing more on like because, um, you know, I think I just started focusing more on one specific. Uh, Pacific uh, aspect of uh, kind of the agency model. And that was like running the ads. Uh, and that's just because that's what I like to do. Um, so you, what I would suggest to like all these guys, if you're watching, if you're an agency person um, or if you're in real estate, whatever it is, if you're in business, I would find the one or two things you like doing. And then basically um, try to outsource the other stuff. Find a partner to do sales if you're good at ads. Um, find a white label partner to do the ads if you're good at sales. Um, hire someone out to do sales. Hire someone out to do sales, client management, ads and everything, right? And then just own the business. Like there's, you know, you really have four or five core um, facets of an agency. You got, you know, lead generation, which could be running paid ads to get clients, cold calling, cold email, LinkedIn, networking, right? all of them work. Um, then you have the sales. So you could do that. You could easily train someone. There's a ton of people in different communities who would do sales or will do sales, you know, even on commission only. And then you have the fulfillment end, which you could do, you can outsource that. Um, and then client management, you know, getting on a call with a client once a week, answering emails, stuff like that, making sure that they're happy, keeping them on board and then doing it all at a profit. I mean, you could do all or none of those things, but I think the sooner you find one or two things you like to do and stop trying to do everything is when you can go. That's, that's when I really started going from kind of making, you know, good money to like, Oh, this is just doesn't feel real. You know, <laughs> from, 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 way, from my perspective, it doesn't, I know there's people from good money to Pablo Escobar yeah. money. I don't know about that. But, <laughs> yeah, but you know, the point no, is, I think it's a little yeah. far from that. Nah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still. Not yeah. controlling half a country yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Ryan is asking, how are you training the pixels? That's good. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll give you a really good nugget here. So on mortgage and survey specifically, you could do this for any type of survey you're doing for, you know, any type of client. Mm -hmm. uh, I but I actually will filter out based on things like credit, um, things like um, loan amount. And I will use that in the survey or in the pixel. I will actually keep um, the lead event separate so that only leads, only leads that have good credit hit the lead event. Does that make hit sense? The event. Okay. So you're kind of yeah. using like some if and logic and, and yep. if you use have logic in your, yeah, in your, in your survey. Um, you know, so only send the good leads to your lead event, only send leads with a certain loan amount to your lead event, you know, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, now I wouldn't get too crazy with that. Cause I have like tried to filter four or five things out and it kind of backfired where Facebook didn't have, it's almost like it wasn't able to optimize correctly. So I would just maybe add one initially mm -hmm. and then two or three, if you need to like start with just credit, just filter out bad credit mm -hmm. and go from there. Um, yeah, I would say that start training your pixel like that. And then Facebook will start finding other people that fit that lead event because you're optimizing for that lead event, you know? So, which is crazy, which is crazy because they don't really know what the question is, but they're going to find people that answer it with a yes <laughs> or what basically, right? People yep. who put this tend to fit in this category. People who put that tend to fit in that category and they just focus on the good ones for you. And so you're able to, and then would you optimize for com conversions on that then? 
or traffic yeah. or what would you do? Yeah, I test them a lot. Like I'm not one of these people who are like, oh, you gotta, you know, scale by 10% a day and 20%. I think all that's BS, honestly, because I've tried it all. Um, and I've also done, um, dude, I went, so I just want to, just want to yeah. mention something about the scaling part of it. So two days ago, I was running ads at $10. I scaled from $10 to $100 in a single day. My leads started dropping. <laughs> like, like I went, who knows, from, you know, like a dollar 80 down to a buck 15 all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, it, it That's just, crazy. Yeah. However, I have had other ads where I've done, right. you know, like, I've gone 30% and all of a sudden my ads might like with cost starts to go up. Right. But there's a lot of things, like, I think a lot of people need to remember there's all kinds of things going on as well. Like, you know, it could be timing. It could be the day of the week. It could be the time of day. It could be just all kinds of weird things. Right. And uh, yeah, like, you know, like you said, it's, (laughs) I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's all bullshit, but yeah, I, there's, there's been plenty of times where I've been like, just, you know, impatient with it. It's like, no, you know what? I've got 300 bucks to spend here in two days. I got to scale. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I remember when I started out and if you guys took Dan Henry's course, you know, he always said to start with five bucks a day. And like, maybe at one point that was optimal, but like, I like, and Facebook has changed over the, over the years, right. That what they told you at one point was start with tr- uh, traffic and then switch to conversions. Well, now they say you can start with conversions. Um, I saw a recent report um, that said from a top media buyer that said not to actually do that, to actually start with traffic and, you know, clicks, landing page views, and then switch to conversion. So it's like, you hear all these things, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's kind of like someone telling you eat, eat low fat. And another guy says, Oh no, you need to get, um, you need to get on the keto diet. Another guy tells you go to vegan. Another guy says go carnivore diet. Like there's so many different strategies people are saying, and the I only one who's it. right is the one who says carnivore. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only one who's right. Uh, but, <laughs> but, well, okay. So I'm going to say yeah. one thing. I will say one thing. Uh, tell us your just, vegan point of view. I, yeah. I'm not vegan. I'm, just kidding. I'm not vegan. So, yeah. So, Austin, maybe like you, you, may, you may not have heard, I've gone vegetarian over the past couple of months. So, just, you know. But anyways, one thing I will say. No is, comment. Yeah, just, yeah I, I know we're not friends anymore. I get it. Fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you really? Is that true? Yeah, it's 100% true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were BSing there. No, no, 100%, 100% true. You I made that decision. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, you know, I, I feel like I'm at that age where it's like, okay, I got to start being a little bit more healthy. And, mm-hmm. and, and not, not to say that eating meat's not healthy. I, like, I don't, like, I, just for myself, right? I don't, like, we just had a party and all we bought was meat. I was just on my, like, we, yeah. we had a birthday party for my daughter. We bought KFC. We bought chicken wings. We bought, like, you know, pepperoni pizza, like, for everybody, right? Yeah. I basically sat there in the corner. I didn't eat. Yeah. <laughs> birthday parties in America, man. We just, we buy cake. <laughs> yeah, we had cake, too. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, it's not a party I, if there's no barbecue there. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> so, I will, I, I want to mention one thing that trumps everything else, which is your offer. If you have a good offer, yeah, true. It don't it doesn't matter if you're going in at five That's bucks true. or you're scaling from five dollars to five thousand dollars. Like it's not if your offer is a good offer, you're gonna get leads, you're gonna get cheap leads. That's all there's exactly to it. Right. You know, it's like if you're on a diet and you're eating uh, keto, but you're eating ten thousand calories a day, or you're vegan, but you're eating all this vegan junk food, like you're not Chips. you're not gonna lose weight doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Yeah. There, there's there's certain things that are like people don't talk about as much because they're they're almost like you know they're thinking all this high level stuff I'm like no 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 just go down here focus on the the very most the first most like initial most important thing which is the offer and then start testing things right because you will get results with with traffic or with you know landing page views or you know um, with those like. Usually what I do is I start with traffic, landing page views, or at least I used to. Now my pixel is like pretty solid. Like I don't have to do that anymore, but mm-hmm. I do. Um, I, I basically go straight to conversions now um, because it's been trained um, and it's a really solid, you know, my pixels are really strong. So, and this is interesting because you're but, using your own ad accounts and your own uh-huh. pixels and you're reusing those for clients, which is really cool. 
yeah and it's nice because i can just share the same pixel and so it's like the pixels already like boom knows exactly what to do yeah like go get it you know go get the leads go get boy. Some more leads in this <laughs> yeah. go get some yeah. more leads for me huge yeah. asset yeah. like huge asset it really yeah. is it really is and that's something i think that people miss right your pixel is something that it's tough to explain to a client but at the same time like yeah. it separates you right because other people can't go in and do that if they don't have that season pixel right you might have the same offer as somebody else but somebody else is not going to be able to go in and get that same result as you because you have those assets behind you. So here's something I've been doing. Um, I've been installing two pixels on my client sites, like some of the clients that I work with, especially the okay. bigger ones. I've been installing their pixel and then I installed my own pixel. Mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, there is a couple clients that where um, if you opt into their website, it then redirects you to a thank you page, right? So like I've been basically tracking that thank you page. And they get, I've got one client, get, they get, you know, three, four, 500 leads a month from mm -hmm. that, like those pages, those opt-in forms on their websites. And then I can reuse those in for clients in other areas. So it's like, you know, so we, we got both pixels installed there. It works really well. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That is. It works. <laughs> That's like huge value bomb. Like Hashtag value bomb. If that was big, you guys, come on. Uh, I mean the pixel thing, seriously, like, Austin, do you ever use that in your pitches with somebody? Do you say, yeah, somebody can put yeah, the exact same ad up against me, but I will win? Yep, I do. I, I will win. Yeah. I'll crush them. <laughs> I'll crush them. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. It's like, no, it's it's like somebody yeah. knowing how to play yeah. sports versus somebody who's been playing sports for years, right? Or football. They're sports reference. But somebody who's been playing football for years versus somebody who's like, yeah, I know all the rules in football. I can totally do this for you. You know, I can be your quarterback, kicker, whatever you want. And you're like, no. <laughs> What's with the sports <laughs> references tonight? I know. I don't know why. I don't know why. They just watch football? Today. Do you watch no, football? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Are you a sports fan, Austin? Dude, how can I watch football? I live in sports Detroit. <laughs> you, got, you don't have a football team there? <laughs> no, we don't. Oh. It's, yeah, basically, no. <laughs> <laughs> We Pretty don't much. have a football team here. You have a baseball team because I've watched a baseball game in Detroit before. We do have a baseball team. Tigers, yeah. right? Detroit yep. Tigers? Yeah. Yep. We actually we do have a football team, but uh, we don't always claim them. Fairly. fairly. <laughs> yeah. Do you watch football? Fairly, yeah. I, I do. Because um, football's bit. used in, in the U.S., right? Like I'm, I'm in Oklahoma, and we have two, like, top ten teams okay. uh, here. What know, is that like? College. <laughs> you, you know, it's unreal tailgating here Oklahoma. no we do have fun man you should man come down whenever you're like sick of the weather up there that's what we should do Shane. actually the, the weather is pretty bad right now so i wouldn't come anytime soon well, i'm gonna be in florida <laughs> like in, in 10 days so <laughs> somebody said go lions oh it's ryan okay chris says the detroit losers oh, that's the one <laughs> is that what they're called the lions says the lions, says the lions <laughs> pixel needs training yes it does <laughs> they need train to go yeah <laughs> no but we do have some questions coming in here so let's let's jump into those real quick we're hitting uh, about 10 30 i know austin you got to take off not too long um but we want to jump into some of these questions if you guys have questions or if you've enjoyed this, make sure to comment below. Let us know, like, you love it. Value people bomb. love live. Austin, man. Hey, Austin, you know, like, whenever you don't come on, we get people that, like, hashtag Austin. Hashtag where's like, Austin. Where's like, Austin. <laughs> yeah. like, where I bet Austin? if you search in the group, like, hashtag where's Austin. Let me look. You'll find it, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Oh, come on. We were having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, tag Austin. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there, it comes That's up in videos. Right. That's great. But when I was in college. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to jump into some of these questions. So yeah. how much do you charge loan officers for your <laughs> services? Uh, flat rate or per lead? It, yeah, it depends. I'm mainly doing the white label now. So like, I'm not working with as many directly. Um, I'm trying to get someone on my team to help can handle that. Because right okay. now we're mainly working with white label partners. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, what I, what most of our like my i guess uh partner packages look like are basically between uh we're offering a guarantee that falls between 40 and 60 dollars a lead um 
Now, some may say that's high, but like we always give people like, so for instance, um, $2,500 for 50 guaranteed leads. And a lot of times we'll pitch it as fair plus credit. Um, and we don't really give people a minimum there either. Right. So okay. um, we basically, we, we kind of put it as, look, we're going to get you at least 50 fair plus credit leads at a minimum for mm-hmm. $2,500. We're going to automate the follow-up, give you automated text, voicemail, um, and email, you okay. know, um, set them up with that CRM autoresponder. And then and also, know, yeah, go ahead. I would say, you know, Shane, Shane doesn't have his headphones in. Maybe I should say it before he gets them in. <laughs> but uh, basically what I was going to say is because you're mainly focused on white label, maybe we need to put together like uh, a course on how to pitch mortgage officers and, uh, and put that together and, and yeah. launch that. Shane, what would you think? Should we do that maybe uh, sometime this year? Put a, a mortgage officer pitching class together for the marketers? I missed everything. We're talking about putting a master class on for with Austin. Three, yes, with Austin. Oh my God! Yeah, that would mortgage be officers. I would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if if Austin would be game, is that something you might be game for this year? <laughs> so, uh, me? Yeah, you. Oh yeah, I'll have to think about it. Yeah. All right. No, I'd be done. Cool. Yeah, we'll have to talk me, about that your, one. If yeah, you guys would be interested, hashtag master class below. If you'd be interested in that, just so we know if there's like some interest. Because I mean, basically, it sounds like Austin. Huge. Like, I think people would love it. Well, it sounds like cycle. Austin. Basically, like I don't have to do any mortgage stuff. I don't know, have to know how to do it. I just have to know how to pitch. And so, if you're able to teach me how to pitch mortgage officers, I can go do that, and I can white label the services from you and get A plus service on the mortgage leads. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's what a lot let's of scale, yeah. let's let's scale Austin's uh, business a little bit more. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> God. He's like, he's like, like oh, I, I don't know if want to hit some stickers, but I'm just going to hit it for you. No. <laughs> yeah, I've actually had people approach me for like real estate and like now I've been just pushing them to you guys. I don't know if they've been going well, after We've had you. a few uh, contact us. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. Cool. Uh, yeah. And we do the same for the mortgage stuff. Of course, you see my, <laughs> my tags all the time. You know, Austin's the best. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think I tagged you today in a post actually inside the ClickFunnels group. Sorry, I don't really check my notifications anymore. So I no, just kind of like, we're going to have yeah. to text him from now on. No, well, this is the thing. I'm at the point now where it's like, do you want, I want to be the coach guru guy and live online and have, you know, constantly bombarded with people? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. So, I mean, I, I think that's a great route for people who want to do it. Um, I just know it's another, it's another level. So it's like, I kind of haven't been posting as much. I've kind of been a little bit more MIA. So it is what it is, but you know. Well, there's only so much you can do, right? I, I know there's only so much. Yeah. So. It really is. And if you're, if you're spending your, you know, I had an interesting conversation with, you know, Dan Henry about that, like, especially. Holy crap. Everybody's saying masterclass. Like I just, I just reloaded the con the comments. We've got a ton of people saying uh, masterclass. Andrew. Andrew Cruz is here. He says, master master Andrew Cruz, he's like, yeah, I want the master class. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Andrew, it's, it's our master class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for the support, though. <laughs> yeah. No, awesome. So it looks like we have a ton of people that are interested. Uh, I'm sorry, I just interrupted. I was just like, all of a sudden, I had 15 comments out of nowhere. So <laughs> uh, we definitely have some demand because 75% yeah. of the audience just said master class. <laughs> yeah, um, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. It. All right, cool. Well, let's dive into some of these questions real quick and then we'll uh, wrap things up. Austin, I know you got to go to bed and uh, get back. Well, I'm not going to go to bed. I'm just going to go relax. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's see, and we didn't even, we haven't even got into that yet because that was one of the family, cool family that, time. Family exactly. Time. That was one of the cool things that I wanted to get into. We haven't had time yet, but uh, you, you've really changed your schedule up a lot so that you can have the lifestyle business that you really want it. Yeah. Yep. That's why you can't get a whole lot. <laughs> um, so Steve is asking, what's an example of a winning offer? Well, I think you, you mentioned it. You're using a VA loan. Well, I mean, we're doing, uh, you know, a lot of different offers just depends on what the loan officer wants to, but we try to suggest a VA loan 
Mm -hmm. um, just because uh, we found the conversion rates are higher because uh, they don't need any down payment. A lot of times their credit doesn't have to be as high. So it's just much easier for them to get into home. And I, I'm going to throw this out people. there because I feel like this might be uh, common sense, but is you're targeting veterans <laughs> for VA yeah, loans? I mean, Basically, yeah. I mean, basically it is. And then, um, you know, once the pixel's been trained, we'll kind of expand the targeting a little bit more. Just How long did it take you to train the pixel? I, I imagine it was a while, but uh, you did boost your business pretty crazy uh, there. I mean, I don't think, yeah, I mean, you know, 30 days. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. It just, it just gets stronger over time. I don't, I don't know how to like really answer that, you know, but mm -hmm. I would say this, like, you know, some people say, well, should I have like, you know, one pixel here or two pixels on my site or one pixel for buyers and sellers and one pixel. I don't think it matters as much if you're doing like, you know, five or 10 bucks a day, I wouldn't really worry about it a whole lot. Um, you know, to be honest, but I think if once you get up into, you know, spending hundreds of dollars a day or running multiple clients or you're just like really scaling up, I think that's when it becomes a much bigger deal. No, I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all, but I, I don't think, you know, some people tend to overthink that, you know, right. if you're just running your ads in your local market, it doesn't matter quite as much when it's as when it's on at scale, if that makes sense, you know, makes sense. so Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. What what else do we have here? Uh, da, 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 da. Offer is king. Let's see here. Chain, regarding your comment about a strong offer, can you take a run of the mill homes list and make that a strong offer? Or when you say strong, you mean a house that is so well priced that no matter what, it'll bring in leads. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Uh, really quickly mm -hmm. on a homes list, you can definitely make the offer stronger by ch changing the price point or improving yeah. the pictures. Like it's, you know, it's as simple as that. That makes a better offer, right? Well, um, work on the at, copy a little bit. The masterclass is a, is, is a homes list. It's uh, all about the offer. It's, but it's all about the offer, right? So. Well, I just say it's, I shouldn't say it's all about the offer. It's 50% about the offer, but it's as much 50% about the script you use with that offer. Would you agree with that, Shane? I'm sorry, say that again. I said it, it is probably 50% the offer, but it's as much 50% the script you use with that offer in order to convert those leads. Oh, the the, yeah, I guess on the conversion side of it, it would be a little different, right? But, yeah. but to get those leads and those, you know, the lower your cost, uh, definitely the offer. It has everything to do with the offer, right? Right. Well, and we've, we've announced that it's basically the foreclosure uh, campaign, but it really is key that you're running the right script because... Well, that okay. That, yeah, you're talking about two different things here. You so the, the <laughs> like, like no, no, no. I'm I'm just saying um, the offer being foreclosures is great, but with that offer specifically. Yeah, that offer specifically. There's some modifications to the scripts in order to be able to convert them properly, and that's critical for that specific campaign. Um, but in terms of a, of a homes list can in terms of any campaign you're doing for real estate. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times price, the pictures are going to be a, you know, a big determining factor of whether or not you're going to be you, generating decent leads. You just posted in the group. Why don't you just tell us about that? Uh, something that you changed in your, your ad. Oh, just the price. That was it. In yeah, fact, but so you I was were where? Mark, yeah. So I'm working in a market where the median price point is 400 and like it's four four fourteen, I think, or four, like, mm -hmm. let's say four fifteen. And uh, I thought, so I thought for sure three ninety nine would work. And, and a lot of times, like I'll test different price points and different pictures. But I was like, I'm running four different offers for this one client, like four, like completely different offers. A homes list. We're running foreclosures. We're running uh, um, a new construction stuff, and we're running another uh, weird offer. So I just I was running out of time, and I my homes list actually, I, I, like I built six different ads, six different pictures. But the price point was all the same, and I thought at three ninety nine, I'd be okay. It, what, I get, I'm getting eight dollar leads for it, um, and then uh, I start looking on the MLS, and I'm like, "Whoa, there's like brand new construction here for three hundred seventy thousand dollars." Like we're basically competing against brand new construction in the market. I'm like, "Okay, well, you know what? I can take a look around." So I found some, you know, some decent homes that, you know, there there is a, quite a few homes at three sixty nine. You know, three sixty five, three sixty. So I just changed the price. Our lead cost dropped from like eight dollars to a dollar fourteen instantly. 
but just by changing the price and the picture. It was huge. Difference. Yeah, big, big difference. So we just dropped the price on the homes list by $30,000. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, the quality is identical. Like it's not going to make, it's not, it won't make a difference on the elite quality at all. It's crazy though, because it, it was all the offer, right? And I mean, that's something I used to I changed a few things too. I'm not going to talk about it though. Yeah, we, I, I we mean, to I'll talk to you later about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to test it out a little bit more though. But yeah, this is something my coach told me. You know, I was paying a thousand dollars a month for a coach. Uh, and one of the things he told me was like, you don't have to market good properties. He said, you just put them on the MLS. Because when you do it, if you price it right, they're going to sell in today's market. I mean, that was 2012, 13, 14, right? But he's right. So even today, you price that thing right, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, in most markets, you can still price a property right and it will be gone. So, but what does that come down to? It's the offer. Exactly what Austin said. Um, let's see here. So uh, let's see. We're getting into Austin's pyramid scheme <laughs> i love it i yeah, love it hey, it's working right <laughs> it is clearly you just want to be at the top of the pyramid that's, that's all it is um joe is asking can you explain white label what is white label <laughs> it's like is everybody frozen? Are... can you hear us austin my headphones are going out airpods man they don't last forever okay so shane you, you're asking uh, about the why don't you? Uh... Well, I think I think Austin's the best guy to explain these. Are you back, Austin? Basically, white label is when um, someone else. <laughs> what? I feel like Shane's laughing before anyone says anything. <laughs> I feel like Shane's always like ready to laugh, or maybe he's sleeping. I can't tell. Do the laughing or sleeping? But basically, it's just having. So a lot of times, agencies will sell the deal. And then just outsource it and have someone else run it. So mm -hmm. I basically am running the ads for other agencies. Okay. Um, so that's basically the simplified version of it. Yeah, you're basically wholesaling ad Wholesale. manager. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so it sounds like Austin uses a different pixel per campaign type. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And Shane, when you're using your own pixel along with the clients, would you use a different pixel per campaign type, or is it? A one size fits all type of deal. No, I typically use like my pixel. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, like I don't, I don't change it up because I'm like, I, I kind of, uh, yeah. Uh, for now, like I'm, uh, yeah, like, and we're doing some other bigger things that I just, I'm not too too worried about it. Um, you know, so. Okay. Um, do you prefer landing pages or lead ads for mortgage ads, Austin? Uh, landing pages, I think. This is the thing. The argument is, um, you know, I guess the two things are cost and uh, quality. You mm -hmm. know, I think all of us would say like, which is, you know, they're both important because you can't just have, you know, quality. Like you gotta, have, you gotta, it's gotta be, you gotta be able to afford it. Your client has to be able to afford it. You gotta have margins and everything, right? So it has to be both. But I think that, um, Sometimes I've, the problem I've had with lead forms is that they're just so easy for people to opt in that, that people often will opt in without getting, um, they will opt in without knowing what they're doing. And I found with um, landing pages that you can get higher intent, um, usually for about the same cost once you've trained your pixel, in my opinion. Now, I will say part of it does seem to work well with the mortgage offer a little bit better, but lead forms work good too. I've used lead forms with it too. So mm -hmm. I would use lead forms if you had someone who just wanted as many leads as you could get. And I would test out lead forms and landing pages and see what got better results. Um, you know, when I'm doing like real estate campaigns, I typically will do like lead forms um, just because I feel like asking more than naming my phone, maybe one or two other questions is fine, but it, it's going to be hard to ask 10 plus questions on a lead form, you know, like, so yeah, I think lead forms are good for just like three or four questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about not having the price in the ad and using it as bait to get the lead? Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure what that is referring to. I, I imagine you're referring to the price of the home. Yeah, I think 
think that's what I've had mixed results with both. I think you, you know, Shane and I, we talked about this and Matt as well. Like it, it, a lot of times it does work if it's a really good deal, it definitely should help, but it's one of those things you got to test it too. Um, you know, there, I, I don't think, I think there's definitely a framework you can use having good, a good price um, and a good area mentioning things like that with a house. Um, but there's no like set in stone rule, right? There's things change all the time, you know? Yeah. It's really about testing, you know? Yeah, it is. Keep it's, testing, yeah. keep testing. And you know, the, the other thing about price too, so a lot of times, you know, when we do like listing campaigns, like an individual listing, for instance, um, we may not necessarily uh, specify the exact price of the property. But for instance, I just did one recently where, um, you know, we're in a market where the average is somewhere around $300,000. And so the copy was something similar to, you know, this home is priced under 250000 $50,000 below the medium average. You know, we're not we're not in the copy, like we're not actually specifying the price, the price of the property, but mm-hmm. we're talking about price. Cause at the end of the day, most like, especially with the real estate side of it. And, and we know this just based on like surveys that I've done um, with, with buyers is that they really only care. Like they care about the price. Like that's the number one thing people care about the price they care about. And I, you know, I've said this many, many times they care about how much it is, if they can afford it, um, it's, if it's within their budget, if they can get a mortgage for it, like it's always about the price. That's typically the first thing. So you need to mention something about the price inside of your copy. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the exact price of the property. It could be something around like, okay, you know, you're saving this much on the property or it's below this amount or, you know, whatever that is. But I, I really, you know, I think it's always important to mention something about the pricing, not necessarily about the price of the property. Okay. Makes sense. That's me. Um, Let's see here. Can I receive a BA discount on white label service? No. Uh, No. (laughs) Are you kidding? Did you see how much he's doing per month? Do you think he gives... (laughs) I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) Price ranges on, on homes. Well, I think that really depends on your location, right, Shane? I'm sorry, what was that? He said price ranges. So I think we're referring to the prices of homes. I said that would really depend on your location uh, as far as what the price is going to be. But like yes. what you're doing, you're you're basically what? 40,000 below. Um, oh, like if I can be, if I can be 40,000 above the medium price point, I'll do it at 40,000 above. Well, like, yeah. It, but- it, doesn't, it doesn't really like, it's, it's again, it's, you know, it's about testing. Well, here's, here's a, here's an example. So, as an agent, I had a short sale, uh, which a lot of agents hate short sales because they take six months to a year to close sometimes. Uh, they can be closed sooner, but a lot of times they'll take anywhere from you know three to six months, six to 12 months, something like that, depending on situation. Uh, I wasn't excited about it at first. However, we priced it quite low so that we could get an offer in to give to the bank, right? And get them to accept it. That's how a short sale works. And in doing that, we ended up getting a ton of people calling on this property to the point where I stopped like telling people I would just meet them at the house and we'd take a look at it. I was just like, no, uh, if you want, if you want to see this with me personally, then you need to come into the office. You know, we'll go over the buying process and then we'll go take a look at the home. Right. Uh, they only want qualified, qualified buyers in the house or something like that. And, I ended up selling three other houses because of that one short sale. And it was all due to that offer. You know, the thing was below market value in the area, but that's something you can look at on the MLS in different locations. What are the short sale prices? Ask your agent, you know, you might find some properties that are are well below the median. Um, Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think we got through most of those. Austin, I, I have a question for like, like just a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Tell us a little bit. Time's up. I know, right? (laughs) You can tell when I'm like. Yeah, right. (laughs) No, just like tell us a little bit about some of the changes you schedule wise to accommodate your growing business and still maintain uh, a life, like a balanced life. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we struggle with as we get super busy, right? Yeah. No calls after five. No, I'm just kidding. I, that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, I would say, yeah, I tried to get up 
earlier in the morning now to get everything done. Mm -hmm. I try to keep my evenings free um, just because I find that a lot of times, um, you know, at, at that level, it just becomes harder to maintain, you know, I enjoy having my free time. I'm not one of these guys that's like hustle, you know, Gary V. I think there's a time for that. I definitely had an, like a, like a stretch, maybe like three months or six months that I was like really dedicated to doing that. And I think it's fine. I don't think it's bad, but I just like, you know, burnout's a real thing too. Like, and I definitely, there was a point when I got burnout and I was like, okay, I got to change this up. Um, so I think it's, you know, I, like I said, I enjoy my time. I like to go hang out with friends, go to the gym, go, you know, rock climbing and do other things like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's just, it's, you find what you want. I don't think there's a wrong, there's anything wrong with like working, you know, 24 seven, if your family's cool with it and you're like, addicted you, to it. And you feel, yeah, and you're addicted to it. Like, I mean, I still feel like I'm obsessed over marketing, but I think it's different. Like I still, I think there's more balance yeah. in life right now where it's manageable for me, you know? Yep. So that's kind of where I'm at now. So no, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, with that, we're going to call it quits. You guys, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we will check those out after the show, try and get to those, make sure that you get your questions. I, I was just going to, I was just going to ask one more thing for Austin is more like, I guess, personal, not, well, it's not really personal level. It could be professional level, but uh, any travel plans over the next couple months for you? Um, yeah, actually, it's kind of funny. Some of our friends are going to Denver next week and nice. they like, we ran into him today and they invited us and uh, my wife and I, and we we're like, yeah, we'll go. So it's kind of cool that we can just kind of get up on a whim and go. That's awesome. That. Um, and then, yeah, I plan to do a lot of traveling this year. So a lot of like masterminds and yeah, cause this is one uh, of the marketing conferences. Is, it's fun, you know? Yeah. Like and this is one of the things that you started doing a lot more of, right? Like last, yeah, I to, last yeah, year. I went to Chicago. Um, yeah. Towards the end of last year, I went to Chicago, went to Milwaukee, went to Florida, um a few other went to denver went to um a few other places and so it's fun to be able to do that stuff mm -hmm. i really you know that's one of the cool things about you know doing marketing and um you know that that's that's when i think at this point that's that's why i really want to value my time and do um you know kind of more high level networking and stuff like that it's fun yeah. too so i like it and traveling you know yeah. love it that's awesome. Yeah, well, we're going to have to get together um, sooner than later. Definitely in 2019 yeah. for sure. At some point. Yeah, all of us have to, uh, together. yeah. And I know a couple of other, uh, other marketers too in the real estate space have said that, that, you know, a bunch of us need to get together somewhere. It's going to be in the U S obviously, because none of you guys want to come to Toronto. So, you know, I'll come to it's like, Detroit. It's perfectly safe. Hey guys, you remember, hey, we have that new place. You guys can come visit, right? In Toronto. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Austin's down <laughs> Austin. oh, the dollhouse <laughs> oh. like the first one in North oh, America that one? No, I'm not going to that <laughs> it has to be in Toronto right oh yeah, my gosh with right that now. we're going to wrap things I'm up gonna, yeah. um, Austin make sure to stick around for a couple minutes uh, same with you Shane but thank you guys so much for being on the show and thank you oh we're done yeah. We're oh, okay. Okay. Good. No, it's good. I got to go. Guys, home. You guys so much for being on the show. Thanks Austin for coming here and answering our questions. Thank everybody else who is out there watching us. Uh, make sure to smash the like button, the heart button, uh, the laugh button. If you laugh, all that fun stuff, uh, leave us some comments. Tell us if you got some value. If you watched all the way through hashtag trooper, uh, and if you're watching live hashtag live replay hashtag replay with that next week, Hey, next week, guys, if you're watching, don't make sure you come on six o'clock next week. It's not, we're not, we're at Whiskey Thursday, six o'clock next week. Ryan Stuman's coming on and he's going to, uh, Ryan give, Stuman next week, us, 6 p.m. Eastern time. time. Closing. Yeah. He's going to give us a lesson on closing deals. <laughs> no, that is fantastic. I can't wait for that. Are you serious? Is he really, is he yeah. really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard he knows a thing or two about closing. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's what I heard too. I, I, I heard know. he's pretty hardcore. I was pretty impressed yeah, with his cars. Yeah. So like, oh. that's what I was, it's like, I'm a huge car fan. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, him standing in front of a couple of Ferraris and Lamborghinis in his parking lot. <laughs> he like, won you over, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was it. No, actually he was in the marketing pros, right? He did a yeah. thing on, I was really impressed actually with what he talked about. And he talks about real estate because he worked with mortgage brokers. And I think it was mortgage 
in fact, I think he was a mortgage broker, right? Um, yeah. He's a very, very interesting story. Um, and uh, and he, he gave the, it was a ton of great tips on closing deals with real estate agents. And yeah, and it's, it's something that applies to real estate agents, people who are working with real estate yeah. agents, mortgage loan officers, people who are working with them. I mean, this stuff applies to everybody. It's really great. It's all about closing. And uh, he's, he's a boss. There's no way around it. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, should be an interesting one. So with that, everybody, thank you so much for watching and we will catch you next week. Cheers. All right, see you guys. You done? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. It's like Zoom is like the huge, like, ah, oh, there it goes. Awesome. Boom, there.